Hey folks, um, just putting together a quick video here for you uh, on a lecture that I was going to present. Um, we've kind of moved on from evolution at this point, and uh, despite everything else that's crazy right now, uh, I'm going to try to get some ecology stuff for you, uh, and these would be the kind of key important terms that I would think. I am uh, currently right now on my deck at my cabin, um, so it's a little bright outside right now, but it's really kind of nice, so I thought I'd take advantage of the weather. Um, so... I'll go through this uh, Prezi that I had put together for a couple of years ago, um, and I'm also going to put together a second um, presentation that will essentially uh, cover some of the problems that I'm going to assign to you as well. So population ecology, chapter 53 stuff, I am assigning some of that from the book um, and hoping that you guys have access to it. I'll get that straightened out later on as the week goes on. So, all right. So a couple of things, um, and you can pause this on the objectives here. Um, we won't be meeting all of these objectives. I just don't see how they're going to be able to test or to uh, to work on some of these things. But I'm going to try to pare it down to what I think they might be able to ask. But again, it's it's anybody's guess at this point. Um, can you understand survivorship curves, mathematical formulas? That's going to be the meat and potatoes of this. Um, we're going to skip link and index. We're going to talk about these two terms just to make sure that those two terms are in there. And we're going to also talk about the difference between K and R selection because uh, that seems to be every year. Uh, something that they love to talk about just to see if anybody covered it. Um, again, with the shortened version this year, who knows, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and that should about do it. So let's get to it. Um, so organization of ecosystems and ecology. So um, ecology is kind of the study of the home of the organism. And so we've come up with different terms to kind of describe like um, what level of organization that we're looking at. And so that would be like individuals would be your individual individual ones right uh, a population is a group of individuals a community is a group of populations an ecosystem is a group of communities now populations are distinct in the fact that they're groups of individuals of the same species they can mate and reproduce and they live in the same place at the same time basically that means that populations of like oak trees in the eastern united states are different than a population of oak trees say in washington state um because they're not in the same place at the same time and they can't interbreed. So populations have that kind of distinct um, definition. Communities, um, when we get to the level of communities, communities are at the level where we start to consider all the non-living things that interact with the various populations in an area. So we talk about like the temperature, um, the, the amount of water available, um, the amount of nitrogen available, um, daylight hours, um, those types of things. So non-living factors that affect populations in area. So that's the level where we actually get to this ecology concept for most people. And then when we start talking about how the, all the communities interact with each other, then we're talking about an ecosystem. Beyond that, we get into like biomes and biospheres and things like that. And we're not going to do that for, for sake of time and for sake of the fact that we just never cover it in AP Bio. Okay, next one up. Uh, survivorship curves. So survivorship curves are um, basically there's three different types of survivorship curves. There's one in which, uh, and this axis talks about how many survivors make it. And this talks about how long they make it. So um, like they take uh, in the book and in a lot of examples, they use stuff like um, mussels or barnacles, um, oysters, stuff like that. And they use the example that like, look, early in their life, like when they've only made it to like 10% of their lifespan, realize it's a percentage, right? So 10% of their lifespan, a good number of them are still around, but they die off really, really quickly. Most of them die off very early in life, where by the time that you get to about half the lifespan for, you know, the expected lifespan for one of these things, there's only about 0.1% of the entire population left. So basically, you got to think about organisms that have a ton of offspring in which most of them don't make it. Um, think insects. Uh, mosquitoes have tons and tons of offspring. Not all of them will make it. In fact, very, very few will make it. Um, if you really think about it, um, and, and you're going to be tempted to say a different answer here in a second, but sea turtles. Sea turtles have a ton of offspring compared to how many actually make it. So when they when you have a ton that don't make it, they're called a level three survivorship curve. 
Um, pretty much if you plot any organism on this planet, you're going to be in level 3, level 2, or level 1, and it will fit these curves pretty nicely. Um, we're going to skip to the level 1 here because it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, these are organisms that most of the organisms survive within the population um, for a majority of the lifespan. It's not until you get towards the end of the lifespan that most of them end up dying off at that point. Um, the book uses humans. I don't like using humans because when we're talking about biology and ecosystems, uh, it could be a little bit easier to talk about um, other living things. So think about trees. Um, trees have most of their offspring that make it uh, until they're really, really old. Um, they don't die out very easily early on. Um, so that's kind of a survivorship curve, number one. Survivorship curve number two is one that fits in between these two, but basically you can think of any mammal on the planet. Um, there's just constant pressure from natural selection that constantly removes organisms from this population, where over time you just have less and less and less of them over time. So um, that's kind of the idea, especially small mammals, and they use the example of, uh, of squirrels here. So it's a good example. So three types of survivorship curves. They're only based on how many make it and how many are born at the beginning. It's, it's a way to kind of look at it. They say percentages of survivors, but realize that you can also look at this as how many are born at the beginning. Because if you think about like humans or any other animal that has these like a level one survivorship curve, um, they typically only have a few offspring. And that's why they're so successful at taking care of them. These are just playing a numbers game. The level three guys are always playing a numbers game. Make a ton of offspring knowing that most of them won't make it and then uh, hope for the best. So, all right. So a couple of different ways that uh, populations grow. And this stuff is almost always in the AP test. But again, who knows this year? But this is something that I just don't think I can I can skip over at all. Exponential growth um, would be growth over time. And some of you guys have seen this in, in your math classes. Um, but the AP Bio curriculum now has um, in your um, formula sheet, which is Appendix A, if you've lost it, just type in AP Bio Appendix A and you'll find this sheet again. Um, so the growth rates, exponential growth rate is going to be given to you and then all of the definitions of things are going to be given to you over here. I just want to talk about it real briefly and talk about the fact that this equation is really confusing and here's the confusing part for kids. They look at this and they see dn over dt, and they think that they need to like plug in something for d, for n, for d, and t, and that's not the case. This dn over dt means delta n over delta t, and in math, anytime you use the word delta, it means change. So this is change in numbers over a change in time. So changing numbers over a change in time, well, that would be a growth rate. So this whole mess right here just is a growth rate. So this just means growth rate. You never solve for D, you never solve for N, you don't solve for any of these individual variables. If you want to in your head, just treat this whole thing as just X. So DN over DT just means growth rate. So at exponential growth rate, the formula for it is R max times N. And R max is the maximum per capita rate of growth. So the number of births minus deaths out of the population. And again, if you're looking for these definitions of things, they are given to you underneath um, birth rate, death rate, and population size. There's your B, your D, and your N, okay? So what it means is an R max is how many individuals does that person or that individual in that um, ecosystem, how many does it contribute to the next generation? If the R max is one, it means that each individual will contribute one organism to the next generation. If the R max is 0.5, that means it takes two individuals to make one more individual in the next generation. If it's 0.1, it means that for every 10 individuals in that population, they're only going to get one more organism, one tenth. Okay. So DN over DT equals R max times N times the population size. Okay. I'm going to go over some problems with you later on in a different video. Um, and I've also posted some links uh, to Bozeman Bio on the uh, calendar um, for this uh, distance learning stuff. And I would suggest that if you're having trouble with that concept, please check those videos out. 
All right, so exponential growth, and I pulled this up. Many of you could probably see that I had that. Here's exponential growth going on right now. Um, we're talking about cases of coronavirus. Um, it is just following a perfect exponential curve. At some point, what do we know is going to happen to this curve? What's going to happen to that curve overall is at some point it's going to level off, and then it's going to eventually drop back down. So what happens when we have to do... Um, problems where the, the the curve levels off now here i've got this uh example of elephants over time these were elephants that were uh, introduced into a, a preserve in africa and uh, they started out with like 10 of them and over time as time went on here uh, you can see that the population continued to grow and grow and grow and it was exponentially entire time at some point in the 2000s, it had to start leveling off because this is 1960, 1970. So how do you express an equation with that? Well, you have to use something called the logistic growth curve. And the logistic growth curve is something that looks something like this, where it starts to grow exponentially, but then it reaches a maximum, uh, like a limit, and that limit is set as something called the carrying capacity, which we use the letter K for, okay? So notice that if we take this part off, the parentheses part off, if we just hide that whole part, dn over dt equals r max n. Well, that was the same equation as before. So we're basically saying it's the exponential equation times this additional part here, k minus n over k. Well, what's k minus n over k really trying to express? k minus n over k is trying to express the percent of the carrying capacity that you're at. So if you're at 100% carrying capacity, it means that your K and your N values are the same. Your carrying capacity, this imaginary number, it's an imaginary number. We have to kind of estimate it a lot. But the, the, um, the population size at which the land can't support more organisms. Let's say that carrying capacity is 100. And let's say we have 100 organisms in that population. Well, K minus N is going to be 0. 100 minus 100 is 0 over 100. So that'd be zero, and then we'd multiply that by there, and that would tell us that our growth rate is zero. Our growth is zero, and that's why this thing would level out at that point. Let's say the population is very small compared to the carrying capacity. So let's say that the population is like um, one out of, let's say it's again 100 for the carrying capacity. Well, then what's going to end up happening here is that you're going to have 100 minus 1 is 99 out of 100, which is 0.99. And then you're going to take that 0.99 and you're going to multiply it by the exponential function, the R max N. So basically you're saying it's going to be 99% of the exponential growth rate, which means it's going to be growing almost close to exponentially. So that's what that value means. All right. Oops. I'm sorry. I'm going to back up here for one second. I'm trying to fit this in the time frame. Okay. So I can let you pause on that and take a look at that, but that's exactly what I just described to you. Okay. Moving on here, um, in reality, the carrying capacity fluctuates as time changes and environmental changes happen. So carrying capacity is like real uh, data from Tasmanian sheep. Um, and you can tell that it doesn't just level off perfectly, but if you fit the curve to it, it you see the logistic growth. Okay. All right. We're not going to do that one. Um, I'll talk briefly about this, but you can tell that these two terms, semel paris and itero paris, um, this means like um, many offspring per event. This one is actually called in the scientific world the Big Bang uh, concept of reproduction. So it literally means have a whole bunch of offspring in one reproductive event. Salmon, fish have a ton of offspring. Um, it usually means that these critters, these organisms over here are on that level three of your um, survivorship curves. Um, Iteroparis means parent, have very few offspring, um, make sure you take care of your kids, and then have reproductive events when you can. All right. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about uh, is K selection and R selection. I'll let you pause on this if you need to. But essentially, K selection means it's the populations are leaning towards uh, factors that help when there's logistic growth, when you're working towards uh, carrying capacity. So when you're really maxed out in your population, Things that have K-selection are things that are resistant to disease, starvation, overcrowding. Things that are R-selection are populations that are really, really good at reestablishing. That's what R means. 
So they reestablish like burned off prairies or a tidal area after tsunami. They're really good at getting going. Um, they're not very good when it becomes crowded. Crowded organ, you know, organisms that can handle crowded situations are K-selected. All right, that's it. Uh, that's all the time I got, and I will check back with you uh, with other videos.